just a few minutes late here today if you're just joining us sorry for the delay uh amazon did it again <laughs> been fighting with the encoder settings they have a very very special way that you have to send data to amazon otherwise they don't take it and so uh sitting here looking at this app and is no happy <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, all of a sudden, it decides it wants to work. So we're gonna we're gonna leave out hope here that this will start to want to work. Hey, look at that! Amazon's checking in now. All you had to do was close the app seventy two times and stream to another destination. That's what it seems to take these days. So we're gonna go live on Amazon here in three, two, one. I see a couple people already watching. Thank you guys for checking in. This is John the Net Guy. This is Tech Day Live number 18. Uh, we've done a lot of shows this year. I try to get a collection of products that are cool and interesting to be able to show you. Today, we've got a bunch of stuff for the home, which is going to be pretty slick. We've got stuff for your car, and we've even got some camping stuff, which I'm excited to try out next year. Of course, it's been really cold out. Uh, so let me know how I sound in the chat I'm going to say hi to the Amazon folks. Hello, everyone. Uh, we also have some new toys this week. This one being one of them. You get this like crazy multi-view now that I can do. I didn't have that capability before. I do now. So I'm excited about that one. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm checking this out. Making sure we're going to the right station. We are. Let me also make sure that YouTube is working right. Just with all the, the craziness that we've had here. Just want to make so if you're in the chat, let me know on YouTube. And I'm going to go in there. I got to go over here. Got to go to the right account. Make sure we are doing this. Uh, I am John the Net Guy. I am live on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and pretty much any other place that'll take me. I do reviews of products and cool tech, today being no exception. So it looks like we've got streaming software public live now. Says it's working. Ah, I see Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you for checking in. Glad to see that that is working. Just want to make sure I've got the settings right on this one. Every once in a while, it doesn't get set to public. It looks like it did just fine there. So thank you, Jeremy, for checking in, uh, friend of the show. I'm going to go ahead and put our caption down below so you guys can see where to find all the deals that they're going to have today. I'm also going to bring up the Amazon show page as I do every week. And that is the URL below. I have some other cool things that I can do this week, possibly. Like I can bring that up there directly so you can see my Amazon show page. Uh, we can bring this up and it is directly live now. If you wanna see all the items, hit the first idea list. That's the uh, tech day idea list. I'm down here in the corner uh, still and this is all of the products we're going to check out today so i can say hey i want to take a look at this first product which we have which is a one to four hdmi splitter now i had a switcher in the description my bad uh this one is actually a splitter so what's the difference between an hdmi uh switcher and a splitter well let's do the unbox and hopefully you'll figure that out right away I am still learning how to do all this, so bear with me. Uh, we've got the splitter here. We're going to open it up. The key is in what it says, that one to four. It is designed here to take one signal and split it into four identical copies. Now, this is interesting because you can take a 4K signal. You can take a full HD signal. In the back here, you're going to have one in and four outs. Well... Unless you're starting at Costco, what good is this? I can tell you a lot of good. You ever wanted to stream and record your game at the same time? This is a very low latency uh, switcher. So you can have this go to multiple PCs. So maybe you have one set up to do record. You have one set up to do your streaming. Maybe they're not powerful enough. Maybe you want to have one go to a TV and one go into a Cam Link 4K like I have over there it can do that as well. With a switcher, you're gonna have a button to change destinations. This one is the opposite. It's one in, four outs. So you're gonna have that. Also on this one, you're gonna get a included power adapter. It looks like it's five volts. Do not lose this thing because I'm sure five volts is not easy to find short of USB. It's gonna use one amp of power. So 
Again, normally I would hook this up and I could show you on my inputs. I'll tell you one area that I actually really want to use this in is my sign. So my sign back here, believe it or not, it's actually a PowerPoint presentation. So I can go through different slides and I can do whatnot. But right now, even with my fancy new switcher here, I can't put my sign into an input because it only goes to one and I only have one output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this PC that's down here running it. I'm going to run it into the in. I'm going to run one of the outputs to my sign. And I'm going to run the other one to my switcher so I can go out to the stream. So I can show you guys whatever slide is up there. So that's something that I'm going to be able to use this for. Uh, let me know in the chat what you might use this for. Uh, so it's a, definitely a unique device. Definitely useful if you're looking to run multiple monitors with the identical content. So again, this mirrors the same content onto multiple displays. So maybe you've got a couple uh, games going. So, you know, there's a, a lot of games coming up here in January, February. Give me one second here. I'm just going to pull up the product page because I want to show you just a couple use cases of it here. I'm going to pull that back up. So as you can see here, this is the connectivity diagram. So you can have pretty much anything coming into it and then you can output it to multiple sources there. That's what they're talking about here. A TV, a monitor or a projector. Uh, in this case, there is a limit on it. I want to see if they put their limits in here. Powered splitter up to 30 feet of output. Now we actually use these at our church as well. Similar devices because we have two TVs that we need to put the lyrics up on. So if you ever need to do multiple outputs, this is the trick to get. And it's called a splitter, not a switcher. So this again uh, is available. It does say a couple quick stats on it here. If we come back to this one, this is the unit right here. It's going to say HDMI 2.0. One of the things you got to be careful of is if you're not getting the full resolution on it, uh, make sure that you're using an HDMI 2.0 device. So to get that full resolution, it also does say 4K60 is supported. So this is going to do your nice Blu-ray highest quality videos as well. And RGB 444, that's a super high bandwidth. I'm not sure about that, but <laughs> we'll see. So definitely splitting one into many. Uh, sports bar, that's another great suggestion. Awesome. I'm going to pull that up here, Green. Thank you, sir. That's a great opportunity in case you want to have sports on multiple TVs. Uh, very easy to pick up right now. It is $24.99 on sale, $5 off. So you're getting a good deal on that. And this is about what they go for. Give me one second here. I got to say hi to everyone. <laughs> what you buying today? <laughs> Uh, uh let's see i gotta be able to learn to type also one other thing that we didn't have in studio before some of you guys might see it up in the corner here i've got a bell we're pavlov's dog i tell you if you guys will do a sub if you haven't done that before if you're one of the drive-bys that's coming in here and you sub to the channel or you purchase anything at all i get a very small commission on the items like single digit percentage you're gonna get to here the old ship's bell. It's also to wake up the people in the house and let them know I got a, a new sub or something. So it's something for me, a little something for you. Hopefully you guys could hear that. <laughs> uh, somebody else says, boy, Jeremy says, forcing the house to watch what you want to watch. I like that. That works for me too. Hey, Firestorm, welcome for joining. Thank you. Again, I am multi-streaming tonight on several different platforms if you're just joining us. Uh, I am going to take a look real quick at one other setting I have to do real quick, and then we're going to go on to the next product, which is uh, something I'm very excited about as well. I need to turn this off. Go back here. Sorry. Uh, usually I have all this set up, but I was just fighting the Amazon fight, uh, getting us even online today, which is looking like it's working. It says the studio is 80 degrees right now, and instead of uh, baking myself live for you i'm gonna go ahead and turn that down a little bit uh, but we'll have a heater later in the show so we can already heat it back up so it's pretty cool <laughs> i love it uh jeremy also says making everyone watch the net guy reviews i love it it's a great idea that that's something i could get behind really well uh, another thing that we're going to pull up on the show is actually an accessory for something you may have seen before on the show so um, I don't know if I brought that other one in. Oh, I did not bring that other device in. Well, you're going to get to see what it is right away here. <laughs> this is why I love having an editor. He can cut all this part out. 
Uh, the next item is a solar panel. Now, this is from the Rofi company. They sent this out for a fair and honest review, full disclosure. This is a 200 watt solar panel. You're like, oh, that's pretty small for 200 watts. Well, let me show you how big this thing actually is. <laughs> It is so big, in fact. It is two by two when it's compressed. I don't think I can get the whole thing in my set, but it has some really cool features that I want to talk about. Well, one, on the back, it's got this kickstand. So you can set it out and have it. There's three kickstand legs, so you can do that. And you can set the angle of inclination to the sun. That's the number one thing that's going to help with solar. I switched to solar this year when we're out boat camping and it has been night and day. And so you take this with a solar generator, with a solar battery bank, basically, and you can refill that battery bank and just be living off grid. This is a 200 watt capacity, but let's talk about what that means. Let me show you real quick inside of here. Now, every one of these, if we pull these up on the top down for you, so every single one of these solar panels, whether you get them from Rofi or Renogy or anybody is going to have an output, an open circuit voltage, a working voltage, and a maximum amperage and maximum short circuit. So in this case, it's going to be 19.44 volts at 10.8 amps. That's what they're selling you. So that's where you're getting all of the power and the capability of this unit. Um, and that needs to go through a charge controller usually. So pretty slick. This tells you all about it. It's got a, a very easy to use manual. Because I can't show it in studio, I will show you uh, a clip of the unboxing as well, so you can see what you get, uh, as well as me using it outside. But I wanna show you something first, which is this cable. This little, I'm gonna call it the octopus cable that they're giving you because it's got so many cool legs. This is where it's at. Whether you have a Jackery like this one, uh, an all like brand like that, or you have the one I showed, the budget one I showed on the other day, which is a 2.5 mil. All of these are going to work great for you. So it's got six different model outputs. So it doesn't matter what you buy. Now, if you bought the Jackery unit, uh, which again, uh, Jackery makes a great battery bank, um, or you bought the all like unit, which I showed, doesn't matter. Or if you bought the Jackery uh, version of this, I showed a 60 watt prior. The Jackery can only work with the Jackery products as it has that one connector. This is going to give you an MC4 native. So you can go into your RV. Let me see if I can get these apart now. There we go. So you can't screw these up. They're keyed. They only go in one way. Uh, you could plug this unit directly into your RV that is solar ready. And they usually have charge controllers and everything all set uh, just with the MC4 connectors or one of six different alternatives. So really slick product here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the footage so you guys can see that. Let's get that rolling. And we're going to start first with the unboxing of it. And I'm going to get that going for you. Here we go. Yes, so that really good looking guy over there uh, is John the Net Guy. And there's the box that it comes in. It actually comes in a box. It's about twice this size. But uh, for the purpose of demonstration, I took it out of the outer box. Inside, it's going to have some uh, protective packaging, but it doesn't need a lot because this thing's designed to protect itself. That's the other neat thing about it is it's a flexible style solar panel. So these are going to have a little bit of give. It's not like the old days where they're, you know, uh, tens of pounds per square foot or whatever it is. You can see how big that thing was. <laughs> and then inside here, I just show you the unbox real quick of that octopus cable and then i'll show you a little bit more about it but i'm actually going to take you guys over right now just in the interest of time i'm going to take you guys over and we're going to look at how to use it outside so we got sun today it's only taken i'm up in the seattle area it's only taken oh about a month uh to get sun they sent this thing out and i said i, I really want to put you on the show but i need a sunny day that's how low the sun was on the horizon at like 3 p.m today so I went out in the front and that is the patch of sun that I had and a nice little mole hole for uh, anybody that's interested when they Washington, Seattle moles. <laughs> so uh, Green's asking, do I need a nice big battery bank to go with it? You know, sizing of this, you're going to get about five to six usable hours of solar a day. There's a little bit of loss in charging. There's a little bit of loss depending on the inclination of this. This is what I love about this, by the way. You can set those feet out and you can angle it towards the sun. So you see that reflection? That's what you want. You want this angled exactly towards the sun. If this was flat like the one I have on my boat, 
I get almost no output of it, especially when it's winter or, you know, you've got that, that heavy angle. Here I am on the phone. This is how easy it was to hook up. I literally got a phone call right when I was shooting. I said, we're going to do it anyway. And I use one of those special connectors and I was able to plug in the all like here. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. So one handed <laughs> hooking up the battery bank. And that was what Green was asking about was you need a big battery bank. So take the total size of this, subtract about 20% just for efficiency. So about 180, 180 watts, multiply that by five. Uh, so that's going to be your hours per day. And you can uh, combine these. That's the other thing we didn't talk about. You can combine multiple sets of panels if you're doing an off-grid thing. So you're going to easily charge. Now this, I'll show you right there. I'm going to pause it for a second so you can see what we're seeing. Now, I was only putting 14 watts in because I'm almost completely charged on this thing. I was running a drill. I was doing everything I could to discharge my battery bank. But this is right at the end of the charge cycle on it. So, you know, even with this very low horizon sun, I was getting like 25 with this on the ground, but it'll go all the way up to the, you know, 180 range is pretty normal. So this would be good for an 800 to 1000 watts per day of uh, actual charging ability. So that's how you would size or choose to size your charger uh, and your solar panel. So. Good question. Thanks uh, on that one, Green. Um, next item up. So that was from Rofi. They've got battery banks and other cool products. Uh, I'm going to be looking forward to checking out more of their products that they have. This one is actually on sale right now. This is from Water First. This is something that I, I had to sell my wife on <laughs> a little bit, but it is something we're using right now in our kitchen. I set it up and we're testing it out. And this is a very special unit. It is a reverse osmosis water filter and instant hot water unit. So this makes instant hot water. It filters with UV light. It's going to filter with a mechanical filter and it's going to do it all almost completely silently, which is great. So very nice to have this. Let me see if I have the right connections here. <laughs> I want to see if I've got the right ones to plug this thing in. I will actually show you the unbox and everything about how it works. But let's take a look and see what we see on the front here. Okay, so it's saying 65 degrees here. So 65 is uh, the temperature of the water that's inside it. Now, what's unique about this one is if you're going to have a cabin, maybe somewhere, maybe by a lake, maybe something that doesn't have the cleanest, best tasting water, you can actually use this to filter any water that you've got that's available and make it safe to drink and make it healthy. Uh, we do coffee and tea a ton. We do top ramen. My kids love that. So I want to show you something real neat. So you can just put this under here. Literally, it's asleep right now. And I can just hit this button. And now it's supposed to start pouring out water. If I do this, there we go. I want to do there. So it starts making water. You can hear that trickle. Hopefully you can see that. Let me bring the side camera over here for you guys. <laughs> there we go. Let's see if I can do this right. Okay, so there it is. One touch to start the flow, one touch to stop. Now, if you know, hey, I only want eight ounces of water or so, you can go over here to volume and set it to six, eight, 10, 12, 14 ounces. And it'll make that. Now, the other neat thing about this and where it really comes into play is that you can set the temperature. So that's room temperature, 62, 113. So it changes the color a little bit. 185. This is great for your green teas. And 203 degrees. Now, I have to make sure I'm plugged into the right circuit because this thing is a full 1600 watts, it says. Uh, if you think about it, when you have one of those instant hot water tanks for your house, it's using you know kilowatts of power, tens of kilowatts uh, or more. Now, the indicator up here, if I go up to the top down, the indicator's already turned to this red color, so you know it's going to dispense hot water, so be careful. I actually made some tapatio uh, uh, ramen noodles earlier today. That's what I had for lunch. Let me bring this up. So I'm just going to do a very small pour on this one. I'm going to do six ounces of really hot water, we're going to go up here and set the temp to 203. I'm going to bring you guys back over to the side and we'll take a look at how this thing works. There we go. I'm going to tap it once. 
And hopefully my extension cord and I don't blow a circuit here because in my office I have a ton of stuff. So there it is. There is the water. Let's go ahead and do one more load of that. Now, the first tiny two seconds of this can actually be a little under temp or over temperature if you do regular water afterward. There we go. And what's funny is that water, you can see the steam coming off of it. It is hot. <laughs> so you, you could definitely do this for tea. There is a little bit of splatter. That's one thing that I don't necessarily like. I wish this was more of an adjustable base here. Um, it's going to go ahead and auto stop at six ounces. This thing carries a full five liters of water inside of it. So it's running right now, putting out that uh, six ounces coming up. Hopefully I did that right. It should auto stop. There it goes. So it auto stops at that six ounces. So there we go. That is definitely hot water. Now you can use this for ramen noodles. You can use this for teas. You can use it for soups. The one thing that we're interested in using it for is our coffee maker because our coffee maker is not filtered, but this thing creates that very, very clean reverse osmosis. I'll show you a video here in a second of what they are able to do with it in their Amazon listing. And I was just blown away, but I want to show you one other trick that it has. So setting it up is not too hard. It does have this removable water jug here. So this water jug can be filled so you can set that up. It does have a wastewater tank because it'll automatically cycle your water if it's been sitting too long. So it'll run for the first time, it'll run a UV light in there and it'll kill any bacteria for an hour. Then it runs every five, uh, five minutes per hour to kill any remaining, which is amazing. But better yet, it comes with the hard line kit. So it's going to come with lines back here to actually hook it up permanently. So you can put fresh water in here with quarter inch line and a wastewater line that actually drains the excess water to keep fresh water all the time. So our coffee maker, we have one of those Keurigs, uh, one I've actually shown on the show, but it doesn't have filtered water. And so this would be amazing because we could fill up the Keurig with the fresh water that this thing makes and have fresh water right there. Now our fridge has that too, but it's also colder, so it's inconvenient. Um, this does not chill water. It keeps it at room temperature. But let me show you guys real quick what you're going to get in the box. And then I'm going to show you how you set it up because it was actually kind of cool. I had a lot of fun with this one. Let's get the unboxing here of the water filter. And I'll get that plan and I'll narrate so you can kind of see. This would be a great family gift if you're buying something for your house or cabin. Like I like to say. So there's that, that handsome devil. Uh, it comes in two boxes. So it's got an exterior box and then it's got an interior box as well. I'm going to take a look at the Amazon chat, make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, very nice gift setup. So if you were to give this to somebody, maybe uh, this could be an awesome college present or maybe for a kid uh, that loves Top Ramen because they can make this themselves. It's safe and super easy to use. Uh, and I believe the company name is Dr. Water here and it's called the Water First. So if anybody buys or uh, does a sub, let me know and I will hit the bell over here. Uh, look at that. So now we're taking it apart. There's the filter unit that goes in. Very easy to set up. There was also the kit. There's the information about the filter. You can see the multiple chambers that it has. So it's got five liters of capacity plus an additional two liters that it keeps on standby. So uh, reverse osmosis is a very complex process to take and filter the water as it does and the UV storage in there and the UV sanitization. But this actually does it uh, in passing. So basically it keeps two liters of water uh, already fresh and cleaned and uh, run through. And then it has the five liter tank. So the first time you run this, you're going to have to run it twice. So you're going to run an entire tank through it. It's going to go ahead and prime the filter. Uh, and then it's going to have all that. Now that little bag in there that has the, the plumber's tape that also has your drain kit. So it comes with everything you need to hook this up to a hard line except for the valve. So you may need to have a valve. Uh, I don't believe that was in the kit when I looked at it. I could be wrong. I didn't check that that part, so I want to double check on that. But uh, you can see that's the unit. Let me show you real quick the video of actually making some fun stuff with it. So uh, did set it up upstairs. And I want to see if I've got that one. <laughs> uh, 
I have to mute this because my wife had some colorful commentary. That was our coffee station. And you can see we have a kettle there that we use all the time. And so this is going to replace that kettle. So I bring it in here. I get everything out of the way. My wife was really worried about the space available in our kitchen. But, you know, this thing, while it looks big, it takes a very thin uh, frontal area of cabinetry. So it's not that thick. It's about the, the width of a sheet of paper. It does fit under our standard height cabinets, which I liked. Our fridge being right there, this is actually going to be really cool because I already have water run to the fridge line and I can tee off of that line and go right through that little tiny wall there and go right to it. And then the drain can go down the same path. So I'll be able to have it automatically drain. If you have the drain and the fresh water hooked up, uh, like I said, it'll actually send the wastewater, anything that it doesn't like, it'll send all the contaminants with the wastewater and return it to your drain, which is kind of cool. Now, this is going to take a few minutes to get set up. It, you're going to have to have something that can carry about 60 ounces of water. Uh, I go through the setup process here. It's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes for this thing to run. It's going to go through a cycle several times now. And uh, I bumped this up a little bit higher because I didn't want it splashing. But it's going to go through a purge cycle. You got to do it three times. And that's when the fun starts. Then you can kind of start to do stuff here. So you can see uh, the room temperature water that I'm running out and I'm running through it. And I'll speed this part of the video up. You'll see it actually go pretty fast. Um, that's filling up at about, I think I have this at 4x. But it does fill pretty quickly, um, especially if it's not heating the water. Now, if it's heating the water, it's limited to 1600 watts, 1500 watts ish on your on your countertop uh, for an appliance. So it's going to be a trickle of, of boiling hot water. But if you think about how much time it takes to boil 12 or 14 ounces of water from scratch, it is faster than that. So it's going to save you time. Whenever you see L1, that means that it is low on water. So you can go ahead and take that out. You can fill it that way. The initial time I set it up, I filled it up individually. And I'll show you here uh, when I get back, I'll show you the inside of the water tank is actually bisected. It has a clean and a dirty water. Always make sure that you pour it out because that's going to be any of the wastewater that it doesn't want. It's going to kick it back out. So then you can fill it back up and do that. So with uh, questions coming in, Jeremy says, how long do you have to do the setup? Uh, takes it about, ooh, how often do you have to do the setup? Oh, just one time. Sorry. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes. Here's my Tapatio hot noodles. I'm on a hot noodle kick. I don't know what it is, guys. But uh, my Tapatio, uh, this requires very hot water to run. Now, that's one of my complaints that my wife had. She's like, well, why isn't it 212, 210? Every single degree to get up higher is hard. This gets to 90 degrees centigrade, which is 203, apparently. It doesn't have a boiling mode, but it gets really close. And so I ran it here. For the first time, it stopped for a second. And I don't know. I think it was already uh, you know, loading that tank that I had just loaded. So I had to start it over again here. I had to hit it again. What's neat about this is you can start and stop it. If you think you've got enough, maybe you miscalculated, you can just tap the top and it'll stop uh, whenever you want. So 203 degrees going in here. Uh, and it actually worked out pretty good. Now I did, I'll tell you an honesty, I did microwave it for like 30 seconds just to give it a little bit extra to get, get it over that hump. But this made it really easy here. And you can see this, I don't think I sped this footage up at all. You can see it uh, floating in there and then I'm going to show you <laughs> mixing it up. So awesome. Uh, and Jeremy says, yeah, definitely good for coffee. And for a French press coffee guy, yeah, absolutely, Jeremy. If you do French press, this is a great idea. So there we go. That was my noodles. I also said, hey, let's make the wife some tea. Now she did peppermint, which does require boiling water. But a lot of the, the ginger teas and stuff that I like, you're only supposed to go to 180. So actually the 183 degree setting would be perfect for that. As you can see, hot, steamy, boiling water out of it instantaneously. So that was uh, very cool. I do have a couple photos now that I think about it. I'm going to add them to our list here. I'm going to send the photos that I just took so that we can see them on the show. And you'll see kind of the, the counter space like I was talking about, because I do think that that's important. Here, let me share them real quick. Share to a shared album, and I'm going to send it to the Tech Day 18 album. And we're going to go get to see those first pictures from my Tech Day 18 album. Photos.google.com. Sharing. <laughs> One second. I'm just pulling it up here so that I can show all this to you. We got another product coming up, and I don't want to 
don't want to sneak it away here, but I'm going to go ahead and share this tab so you guys can see it. Man, I got to do the right button. I'm telling you, I'll take a day off and <laughs> there we go. So that is the counter space. Uh, if I take a look at an angle, what it looks like now is I can put this water boiler right up against the side. And as soon as I get the water hard lined into it, I won't have any more access problems. I don't have to go in there and take it apart or do anything. It'll be hard lined, won't have any problem. It'll have uh, both filtered reverse osmosis and UV filtered water, as well as hot boiling water on demand. And there you go. You can see, like I said, it's very skinny. When you actually put it up next to a coffee maker, it's as skinny as my coffee maker. Um, and it's, it honestly is as skinny as the handle and everything for a water boiling kettle. Uh, but this is very popular in Europe. A lot of people like uh, the way that this works, and especially if you're a tea junkie like myself. Now, I promised you I'd show you one really cool thing that it does. And let me get back to that product so I can show you that. I'm bringing it over here. So let's go to their video. I don't normally like to show video from the vendors, or I like to show you my stuff. But this thing is so cool. If I can find it, this they have a full-length video and it shows you all the features of it want to find if this is the one <laughs> there it is okay you got to see this this lady is going to pour cola into the tank not water this is coca-cola and it's so it's so powerful this thing is going to be able to filter it down to fresh water so you talk about distillation and all the other stuff this thing can actually take coca-cola or some sort of cola and turn it into fresh water this is from dr water this is their water first unit so hopefully you guys enjoyed that little demonstration I want to thank them for sending this out for a fair and honest review i'm looking forward to trying it for a long-term test and i'll uh, let you guys know how it works now there was a question it looks like in the chat another question how often do you have to change the filter that's a good question on this i didn't look at that let's go take a look at the product page and see if it gives us a uh some data on that it does actually have let's see filter plumber free installation it doesn't say it on their stuff directly but it does have a filter status indicator for filter life so if you don't use it very often you won't have to change the filter very often if you use it a lot you may have to change the filter more often and it does have an indicator when that filter is ready to go and you can reset it i'm trying to clean this up over here there's no real way to leave cords that don't look unsightly <laughs> there we go awesome great questions okay we're coming back over here and i'm going to pull the next item up on the show and this is another kitchen item i can tell you i had an amazing summer we've been out fishing we've been camping we had a great fourth of july and this is a very old food saver this is my old and trusty food saver i'm not trying to sell you a food saver here tonight but what I am going to show you is one accessory that every food saver owner needs, and that is bags. Because when you open your food saver and you're ready to use it and you run into this, <laughs> you're like, oh, what am I going to do with that little piece? That's all that was in here. Uh, this is from Box Legend, and this is their ready-to-go uh, food saver bags. It's a continuous roll. So if you're like me, maybe you're a hunter, fisherman, maybe you just are tired of buying little tiny rolls. This is one of the most efficient ways to buy bags. So let me get you on the top down here so you can see what is inside of it. We open it up and this is a continuous roll bag and you can get it to any length that you want and then just simply cut it across. So now I've got the start of a bag and I'm going to go ahead and take and bring it over to my food saver here. There's 150 feet by 11 inches. Now they make multiple different sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit seal on that. Um, this is again, a very old beat up food saver. I've used this for countless times making uh, packed smoked salmon, uh, jerky and all a bunch of other stuff. And so now that is sealed. So that bag is sealed on that end. Now, what I would recommend, if you're one of those people that, that has kids like myself that goes through a lot of snacks and other stuff, you can make your very own snack bags. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. This is pretty cool. So take your food saver. Now, imagine we're going to go on a boating trip. I have this to bring. 
I've got this to bring. <laughs> I've got this to bring. This to bring. I'm going to make some custom trail mix with this setup. So kind of slick. I can take my bag that they provided. Now, what's neat about this is you could actually take the same bag and make multiples with this. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to do some almonds in that. Put those away. So much easier than carrying on the boat the jars, which rattle around and get broken and my wife would get mad. I can go ahead and use this and make a custom batch of trail mix. Vacuum seal it for freshness. And I'm going to save a little, little more chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to save a ton compared to going to the grocery store. Uh, so if you have these continuous roll bags, you can do a lot of neat stuff with them. Let's put a little granola in there. This granola also just happens to have some berries in it. So I'm making my at-home trail mix. This would be great for a boating trip. And who else wants to see marshmallows? I want to see what happens to these marshmallows. I was like, yep, we're throwing those in. We'll see what happens. So let me take these out of the way. This is from Box Legend. There's their continuous roll. Now, is it going to fit inside my food saver? No. You could roll some out and you could cut them and you could do that. You could re-roll it. But the idea here is that if you're doing bulk food saving, you could take this and use it over and over and over and over again. I'm going to go ahead and set that down where it needs to go. Go in. And this is always the fun part. Vacuuming down. <laughs> with the vacuum sealer. So there we go. Those mushrooms are, are not mushrooms. Those marshmallows are not happy. They're definitely stretching out. So there we go. Another thing that I like to do on this, and I'll see if I've got my trusty tool in here. Probably not. Oh, I do. Okay. Grab a pair of scissors. One of the other things I like to do is when it's all done, especially if you're packing this for kids. Now, I did this really far out. Oh, you know what? I did not do it. I just did the vacuum down. I didn't do the seal. I, I'm silly. Let me do both. I'll tell you exactly. So let me hit the combo. So it's vacuum sealing this down. It's killing those marshmallows. All of the air is out of the bag. The other interesting thing about this is it has these little dimples. So these bags are uh, have this texture to them, which is going to allow them to get more air out of the unit. So there we go. Now that it's sealed, it looks like this. I'm going to bring this over so you guys can see it. Ta-da! So this is much easier to take on the boat with me. The other interesting thing is I have shown you guys on the show before a portable sealer. This bag is, is going to work with any brand of vacuum sealer you have. What I like to do, and I'm going to show you this trick, for the kids... I put a tiny little tear on the edge, a little, little nick. Now, this is still safe, but what it allows the kids to do is to pull, and they can get to their treat. Now, if I did this right, I should have mixed that up a little better. But if I do this right, what I can do is actually reseal this again and again. So you can, again, cut this back down and reseal it. There we go. So from Box Legend... I tell you what, there is something that happens where I'm looking at products to buy and all of a sudden I'll get an email from a rep that says, hey, you want to try this thing out? And I'm like, yes, you were reading my mind <laughs> because it is so nice and convenient. I think I cut that a little bit long, but let's see if it will seal. Looks like it will. So again, you can open it, reseal it. So I cut them a little long. I would highly recommend getting a continuous feed roll like this if you're going to do some of the stuff that I do. And let's go back up to the photos because I want to share with you guys a little bit about my summer. You're going to see the fun that we had. <laughs> um, I'm going to go, I'm trying to figure out which order to go in. Sorry, I'm taking my, my sweet time here. Let me show you the photos here. So these are the photos of the salmon that I was catching this summer. We had the entire kitchen laid out in uh, both pink salmon and silver salmon, a ton. Hey, Jonathan Tolbert, welcome. Good to see you here. And all of the salmon needed to be vacuum sealed. So I was going through a ton of vacuum sealing bags. That's how they go into the smoker. And then they come out here of the smoker on the racks. 
and then they go into my vacuum sealer. So I was using a ton of this for making gifts, but not only like, can you do these snack bags like I showed for trail mix and other cool stuff for your kids, um, vacuum sealing, anything for camping, boating, uh, any sort of outdoor activity is nice. Uh, these are the salmon themselves when I caught them and there is in there. I'm going to, I'm going to see if anybody knows what that is. There is a different color salmon in there. That's bright, different color. Um, and so that was one that we caught this summer. And there's a couple of the salmon sitting on the back of the boat. So I actually use the vacuum sealer right on the boat. I take it with me. I've got a, a battery powered one that I can use, or I can take the full size depending on what I'm doing. And having these is a great option. It's 150 feet. They're normally $39. Let's go over here and see on Amazon live. Sometimes these prices change and that's what I don't like, but it looks like they're holding steady on Amazon right now. So they're available on Amazon 4.7 stars on 1165 reviews. You'll pay about half of that for less than a quarter of the same amount of bag. So um, don't be fooled if you look at some of the other ones and go, oh, well, they're only $20. It's $20, but they give you an assorted bag set and they're very small bags. Another interesting thing about this 11 inch uh, bag size, sorry, I just put that down and don't realize where I did with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's nice about the 11 inch bag size is you can actually bisect it. You can cut it down the middle with the cutter right here. So if I want different sizes, I can cut this down here one way. You have a sealing machine right here, so I can take it back to my cutter and I can make little pouches. So if you want those smaller ones, you can make smaller bags out of the big bulk ones. So that's another trick to save a little bit of money and not have to buy the assorted size bags, but you can still make small bags even out of this large roll. So 150 feet by 11 inches. So almost, what is that? 135 ish square feet. And that is from box legend. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this without electrocuting myself today. And we're going to go on to the next product. I have a video for that one as well. And this is a tire inflator. Now I've shown you a few of these. This one has a couple features I like, something that I would like to improve upon it. Uh, size and the battery on this one feel a little bit heavier um, construction wise. Let me bring you guys to the top down. These are imperative to have if you're in the winter months. I can't tell you how many times my TPMS light has come on. So this has been incredibly nice to have. Um, so it's going to have a built-in flashlight. So you can turn the flashlight on here. You can see that now it's going to have the modes. It's going to have the little attention grabbing mode. I don't think it has a full SOS mode. So it's either continuous on or flashing, but it's not super bright. You can see that in the studio. So I'd like that to be a little bit brighter, but it's just nice that it has some lighting to be, to be built in. The other neat thing is this other side, it actually has a USB type C charging port as well as a type a so it comes if we open this up uh, actually you know what? put the accessories over here sorry i did an unbox video earlier so i could use it it's going to come with these different accessories as well as a manual let's take a look so this is going to inflate your basketballs other toys you know footballs it's going to have a uh, regular tube inflator so this is going to be for you know, uh, blow up water wings, things like that. It's going to have the Schrader valve adapter uh, for specialty bikes and other items that use that style. And then it's going to have the charger as, as well as a manual. It would have been nice to have a bag to maybe put all this in. Um, you can detach. And this is one thing I really like about this one. You can actually detach the hose and it's all very nice metal construction because these things get hot when they're running. It's a compressor, and so it's going to, you know, go up to, I have to look at the maximum. Let's take a look at the manual, make sure it shows us a maximum amount here. That one is in Spanish. Let's get over to the English. Product diagram. There we go. I just want to double check and see what the maximum. There's the back half of it is in English. And it looks like it says it can go up to 130 PSI. Um, and then between 120 to 145 PSI is the proper pressure. So that's pretty high. I took it up to about 60 PSI. I'm going to show you that real quick here because I did have to do that outside. It's a little bit hard to show that inside the house, but we'll take you back outside and I'll show you this thing in action. 
So this again is my boat outside. We just brought it home from the mechanic after forever. You can find the air pressure requirements on the side of any tire. So it's either in your door panel or you can see it on the side of a tire. And uh, we got a comment from Jeremy. He says, nice big display. Absolutely. It's very easy to read. So I guess that would be another pro compared to a lot of these other ones. And it does film really well here, which the other ones kind of flash. So very nice. Uh, Nissy Fam says, yo. Well, yo to you. Hey, if you give me a sub, I've got the bell here in the background. This is my first time uh, using the bell. Now that was sped up. It's not going to fill that fast because this is, again, a small unit. It's going to fill bike tires much easier than these full-size tires. But it topped that thing off in a couple of minutes, which is kind of cool. So very nice to have. I always love to top off my tires before you tow, uh, especially in the winter months. Air shrinks. And so air likes to get out of uh, leaks in tires, older tires. So I always recommend having these. And I'll tell you, the other day we had... Uh, a scare. My wife was out of the rowing. My daughter was doing her rowing thing. And my wife's like, I've got like 10% battery on my phone. And we were down there and I pulled one of these out. So having a battery bank that can charge your iPhone multiple times is really nice. So this is going to have that USB battery bank capability as well. So even if this is just an emergency item in your car, how nice would it be like in that situation to say, hey, let's just grab this. And I, I handed it to her. She dropped it in her purse, plugged it into her phone and was able to charge all the way back up. So uh, that is from the rabbit. X. <laughs> uh, uh, you got to pronounce this for me because I don't know how I'm going to pronounce that. That's from the rabbit Exoco rabbit Exoco. But yeah, one of the nicer units that I've seen uh, in this form factor, this size, it would definitely fit in a glove box. So I want to thank them for sending this out for a fair and honest review. Looks like a really good product and it was able to work as advertised. So very cool. Uh, next one is a larger product. I'm going to have to bring out the big guns here. You guys have seen this before. <laughs> this is our test station because... We have a large product coming out, and this is a floodlight. So I've got a smart floodlight. It's from the AOSU company, AOSU. So, uh, but they're a very popular manufacturer. Some other YouTubers have already tested this one out. I did not look at their videos carefully. I didn't want to taint my review and my thoughts on it, but I did see some pretty interesting things. Now, I'm not going to necessarily plug this in <laughs> that I think about it because we don't have this. Normally, I use this rig to show you how to do wiring. We're going to go ahead and hook this floodlight up and test it out for the very first time. And then I'm going to transfer it outside and you guys are going to be able to see it outside. But I'm going to go ahead and roll with you the unboxing of it so that we can take a look at it. So here we go. This is the Aosu floodlight unbox. Another handsome guy there taking a look at <laughs> this floodlight. I'll bring it out while he is and we'll talk through it. So this one does not need battery power. That's another really nice advantage of it is it's going to be powered. So it has some neat features. It is one of the only ones I've ever seen that can install both horizontally and on a vertical mount ceiling. That's a neat feature I've never seen before on one of these devices. I've seen other ones from Wise and um, Anwiki and a few others that I've put out. Uh, Blink even makes a wired floodlight now. But this is the first one I've seen that you can actually mount to a ceiling outlet. So if you have like a carport with a ceiling, you could definitely install it in one of those. We're going to install it here today. And I'll show you that once we get the end box here. And what's interesting about this one is just the style of it. If you take a look at it, it has two lights, 2600 lumens. It has two separate Wi-Fi antennas. And it's 270 degrees of active motion detection. So it's going to have motion sensors on all sides here uh, other than the back side. So that's where it gets the 270 degrees. It is also a pan tilt. So it has a higher resolution. It says 3K. So it's higher resolution than Wise or the other guys. And But it is movable. So you can actually move it in the direction. So that's a difference in, in your purchasing. You know, the Wise one is 180 fixed field of view. So you're going to get less resolution in one direction. This one has no subscription fees. That's another benefit. And you can put a micro SD in it as well. So um, I'm excited to install this thing. We're going to get back into the studio here 
and I'm going to get installing and we're going to test it out and see how well it works. So I've got my version unboxed. I'm going to go ahead and see what we have here. And I'm going to walk you through the steps to install this. And hopefully, yep, I still have my connectors up there that I'm going to need. Bring you guys on the top down for just a second so you can kind of see what I'm working with here. So if you're not comfortable with electricity, don't do this job. Call an electrician. They'll be more than happy to come out and install this for you. This is a dead simple installation these days. So uh, as smart products go, they've gotten really, really good. Um, this borrows some stuff from other ones that we've seen, which is a single hole in the center, which is nice. We're going to take a look and judge the instructions. So there's the table of contents, the overview of it. There's the, all the stuff that you get, depending on what you need. Looks like it even has a USB charging adapter. So you can play with this thing before you set it up. So that's kind of cool. So it's got a USB cable here to use indoors if you want to set that up indoors and it's got some additional screws as well so we're going to have some of those depending on the size of the, the mounting that you need it's got a cap for the center screw once you're all done with this you can cap that off so it doesn't rust and then it uh, looks like required but not included is a power adapter if you want to plug it in and preset it up and then a drill as well so you know i'm thinking it'd probably be best for us to pre-set up the floodlight here so let's go ahead and do that. It does have max support for 128 gigabytes. Um, and it does a fat 32, it says, with a at least a class 10 read and write speed, which is almost every one of them nowadays. And then on this side is where you download the app for it. So setting it up, it's recommending, even though this thing's right here and I could probably do it directly, it is recommending that we go ahead and plug it in. I'm just double checking what I have here for a USB charger. So you will need a USB charger. It does come with the cable. I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, hey, Arctic Wolf. Thank you for checking by. <laughs> awesome. Good to see you. And uh, Chuck, uh, home missed the first part. Great stuff. Yes, Chuck, this is a, a cool product. This might be fun down where you're at. Let's see here. I'm going to turn the captions off so you guys can see me because I'm down in the corner doing this work. And sometimes it's hard to see that. Okay, so there's a USB Type-C connector. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And then you go ahead and take this thing. We're going to flip it over. And the reset module and everything are down below. And this is where I can plug in the unit. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the unit in here and just kind of bypass it. Now, it says that we need to use our phone. Now, you're going to have to forgive me because, again, this is a brand new switching setup I have here. So I can do some pretty amazing things. Uh, but I need to figure out which input. I happen to have the iPhone on, so I can show you the iPhone as well here. I'm going to go ahead and use the camera on my phone. And I'm going to search for this in the App Store. It's looking like it did it. Unfortunately, on Amazon, I'm not allowed to show uh, barcodes, so I cannot pull that up right now. Let's see if it can read the barcode here. Oh, this one's having a little problem reading the barcode. This is my really old iPhone, so I'm going to take it back here. <laughs> I'm going to search for Aosu and hopefully it finds it. There we go. Uh, it looks like that's the right app. It's under utilities. It's got three stars. Okay, let's see if I got the right input over here. Here we go. Touch ID to install. I'll be down here on the side while we install this. And hopefully this is the right app. It looks like the right logo. Now, did I get the green light? I do have a green light here. That's one of the things that they're recommending is that you have a green light on this one um, if it's plugged in, so then we know it's powered up. Go to the next step. I do have to sign up for an account. Now, uh, the manual is going to have lots of information over here, so I'm going to take you guys over back on the side. It's going to tell you about where to install this, so that's another interesting thing. So when you're installing a floodlight, it can actually be installed too high because this one uses a passive infrared motion sensor. So you don't want to install it too high and you don't want to install it too low. So if it's too low, somebody can attack it. I'm going to go ahead and sign up here. And while I do this, I'm going to come back here so you guys uh, don't get my phone number and information <laughs> as usual. I dox myself all the time, but let's do this. Awesome. If you guys have a floodlight already, let me know in the chat what brand and if you're happy with it, maybe I can pull something off here. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. I would prefer that most of these go to a uh, Google style security or other ones. That would be really preferable um, so that you don't have to remember separate passwords and usernames. This one is a little bit backwards in that it's asked for a password and then it wants an email address. So we're going to double check that. We're going through the full setup. If you're just tuning in, this is John the Net Guy. This is from AOSU. And this is their floodlight camera. I'm going to do the full installation for you guys right now. So I got the email. And it wants me to confirm that I got the email. I'm going to hit verify now. And hopefully that will do it. So it says verified. Okay. And now it's asking me to log in. Once I get past the login, I promise I will show you guys what I'm working on right here. Okay. I'm logged in. It wants to find devices on my local network and it wants to save the password, which is good. I'm going to bring you guys back over here so you can see that I get this now add devices capability. So I'm going to say add device. It does have Bluetooth scanning, but automatically it found the floodlight that quickly. And you can see my serial number there. Now it wants to know what Wi Fi to connect to. Now I have different Wi-Fi networks around here. I'm gonna put it on the IOT network. Uh, and I recommend this if you guys have never done this before. Unfortunately, I've gotta hide. Can I hide my password? Will it work? Uh, there we go. <laughs> it was showing it. Uh-oh, I don't know if this is gonna allow me to do it. Uh, <laughs> I've gotta go back over here again. Sorry guys, some of these things, I usually set them up a day before, but I wanted to show you the app experience and get you my first impressions on this one. It wow. may take a moment. Please wait for a while. Nice. So it's got a voice in there. Uh, Jeremy says he's got a Walmart so brand. Okay. So it is struggling a little bit to spin around and set the uh, bounds because this thing has been set up. Now that it's set up and it's been added, uh, I'm probably going to be able to do this. I'm going to say that this is the front door camera. Quick start. Quick start local storage now it does offer cloud storage that's where they do make their money so again there's no memory card in here so i don't have that um saw one later i am going to ask for the cloud storage here and hopefully that works i'm going to go ahead and do seven day um actually i can't do that because i have to do that right now i'm going to say no on that and now it says go ahead and unplug the cord so i'm going to go ahead and do that so we can unplug it and then we're going to go through the actual installation process here so i'm going to see i'm going to keep this on the side available to us and we're going to go through the installation steps if you've never worked with uh, high voltage make sure again that you turn the power off i'm going to bring this over so you guys can see what i'm doing i do a lot of these so I'm fairly comfortable with this process and the process is pretty consistent on most of these products i'm just trying to get it here so where you guys can see it and then you'll be able to see me and i'll be able to talk you through the process here so uh, again you have a white you have a black and you have a copper or green yours might be green make sure that your switch is off as well as the circuit breaker in my situation i use this as a circuit breaker this is my uh bench and it has this little indicator to tell me how much wattage everything is using so i use that as my indicator that the circuit is off so i would recommend to do that there's also non-contact voltage detectors which i have shown you guys previously in the past so um, next step that it's saying here is to find a position to install it we're going to go through the installation guide for north america so i'm going to go ahead and do that oh one second there we go. So this is what it's asking. So let's go to detailed steps and see what it says. So this is all the information. We have all that. We don't need a drill because we're not drilling anything. We do need to shut down the circuit breaker. It's asking us to do that. We'll go through install the mounting plate. So it looks like the divot on the mounting plate faces downward. Okay. I was wondering if uh, which direction that would be. So this is the mounting plate. We're going to come back over here. And we're going to go ahead and put that in any which direction you want, which is kind of cool. Now, I'm using these screws only because my test stand has been road hard, put away wet. <laughs> it uh, has had a tough life, and I have to use different screws because I do so many product demos here that eventually I'm going to have to replace this little uh, outlet. But you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and install this. 
and we'll get there's only two screws here i've thought about bringing a drill out before but you know what i can do two screws by hand Let's do that so this is definitely user installable i try to look just at you know any products that i put in and and see how the instructions are the instructions look good on this one this does have a captive ground screw there which is nice so you don't have to hook up a separate ground to this so what we're going to do is we're going to take this the copper wire here and we're going to put it around this screw that we're going to install right now so that's how easy it is plus the app's going to walk us through it and of course with my luck i will probably throw this screw across the room that's just how life works a couple ways you can do this if you're trying to do too much at once you can simplify it you can get the, the screw started there we go that's pretty fine thread on that ground screw but we're going to go ahead and loop it over now so i've looped my ground wire over top of the ground screw and make it in a clockwise direction the hook on it so that it will stay tight there as you're tightening it actually tightens the loop even more okay so i want to do that i want to make sure it's compressed and it's not going to come out and touch anything there we go so going back to the instructions now it's going to give us the two options that i was mentioning this is the first one i've ever seen that has an upside down or a ceiling mount we're going to say we're wall mounting it so uh thread the tail of the wires through the camera base now if i went and said the other way it's going to have you thread them a little bit differently here so let's go through the middle of the mounting base for the wall mount it looks like it's through the three holes in the mounting base so let's go ahead and take this out so you guys can see this now these holes on mine don't appear to be milled perfectly let me show you that so those are the three holes i think it might just be a little bit of plastic so what they want you to do is to take this and feed these through maybe that's where you need the drill from okay it looks like these have a little gasket and that gasket may have shifted a little bit or was not installed perfectly so that's the little three holes right there let me see if i've got something to punch through these or this could be a very small demo i do i have a countersink bit for some reason so that is what was going on it was just a seal so i'm going to go ahead and drill through that so that's one thing you do want to have a very good watertight connection here so that's important so i'm going to do that i'm going to go ahead and run as it says here it wants us to run these through it doesn't necessarily matter which goes through which it just needs they all need to go through here to the other side again this is going to be tough with that not being perfectly cut okay i got the first one through i'm going to try and get it to go through here okay the divot is supposed to be facing outward. Oh, it does. Is that what you're saying? I have to go back through here. I want to make sure I didn't do this wrong. What's weird is the ground screw says ground on this side. I'm going to go with the inside because this screw is pretty long and we'll see if we get caught. But uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking is usually a divot like that might face outward, but we're going to try it. Looks like it even allows us to screw up a little bit. So <laughs> just running these cables through doesn't matter again which one goes through which hole it just needs all three of them to go through um, now is this a little bit extra work yes it is but this gives you that flexibility of mounting to a ceiling so like I said if you've got a carport and you want to add a floodlight underneath your carport where you might only have an existing uh, single light this is a neat way to do that and I'm kind of excited to see the results of it so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just making sure that hole is big enough because my version of this didn't quite have that gasket in the right spot. So it's making it a little bit harder to install. No biggie, I can do that. We'll push this through and we'll go on to the next step in just a second. There we go almost done with this part and wiring you know it can be scary for people but you know what again it's not that difficult in the end so this is the unit right here 
and we know that we want it to be facing this way so we are going to install it like so so i'm taking the unit slide those three wires down okay that's how it's supposed to be lined up okay going back to the wall mount we're going to go through the next step now it's asking me to put the four screws that it had down here through the back plate so it looks like these ones right here Maybe I should have got the drill out and saved myself a little time here, but no, this will work. <laughs> we'll get them lined up. So this is a little bit more cumbersome than some of the other models, but it does give you that flexibility. So if this is a feature that you need to be able to install to a vertical outlet, this is one of the only ones that's going to allow us to do that. So let me get you guys back over here and we'll go through this step. So what I'm doing right here is I am screwing... Ah, the four screws <laughs> in here. So I'm going to put one in. We're going to hit that screw there. Get it threading. Now we've had some break-ins recently at our church and I've been looking at floodlights. So this is a nice option. And I've shown you a couple floodlights on the channel this year even already. So I'll be interested to see how this one performs. This is from Aosu. And I'm just remembering, I got to put the, uh, I'm just going to do two for now because we're doing the show pretty quickly today. So there it is. So that's working. Again, you've got your Wi-Fi antennas that go up. You've got your adjustable, pretty limited adjustability here on these. Uh, for your two floodlights that's available and we'll go to the app and we'll hit the next button this one like others does come with a uh, hook option let me get you guys to the right camera so this one does come with a hook to loop around it while you're doing the wiring so it looks like it wants you to tether one of the floodlights to this hook which i can then hold the whole unit up like so so there we go. And that's going to take the pressure off of you while you're doing the wiring here. So we're going to come back up here and you can loop this around to take, like I said, the pressure off, and then you can do the wiring down here at your convenience. So um, technically it's funny, it grounded to the screw, but then it has an additional ground. So this one doesn't ground through the base. So I'm actually going to take that ground screw off we don't need it and this is a plastic outlet box we could do some things we could pigtail and do some other stuff but we're not going to worry about all that i'm going to take this off of there and we're going to use it like a traditional fixture so i'm going to go ahead and straighten that out and we will put that through a wire nut so that's one thing that they didn't cover right away okay so i'm going to use a wire nut here real quick and I'm going to do all of the wiring right in front of you so you see what's going on. So this is your ground. Green is ground. Remember that. So make sure this is stranded wire going to solid. So get that stranded all the way up to the top. I'm going to go ahead and twist tie this down. Twist it down so it holds. I would have liked this hook to be, or this, yeah, to be a little bit closer. So these are easier to attach but i'm going to go ahead and put the black one on here overall not the easiest thing to install but uh, definitely not the most complicated i've had many of these kits that are much harder so far for the flexibility that it offers this one's been really good i also do like the fact that it was bluetooth setup so i didn't have to show any qr codes to it or anything and i'm excited to see the pan tilt capability that this one has so I'm going ahead and tighten this down now that we have all three sets of wires, make sure they're good and tight and you can pull on them and make sure they don't come out easily. That's a really good way to, to make sure your installation is set. We're going to go to the next one. Talking about uh, going up on a ladder, be very careful. We've got the hook there. We're doing our wiring, which we already did. So going through the steps pretty quick. There is a center mount nut here, and that's the one we're going to be putting on here. 
<laughs> Zachary, sorry, my friend. I should be sending text messages out to people. Look at that. He says, thank you, YouTube, for not mentioning this, uh, <laughs> for not notifying me. Zach, sorry. Sorry I missed you, but I'm glad you're here now. I've got a uh, floodlight we're installing right now. I'm going to try not to electrocute myself. So far, I'm 100% non-electrocuted. You could mark, mark safe from electrocution, <laughs> as they say. So I'm going to go ahead and unhook this little hook. Now I'm going to tuck the wires back in here. Some of these had enough room in the base to tuck wires. This one does not look like it does. So we're going to have to be careful. The base does have a waterproof gasket. So I kind of like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and line this up. I'm going to take the screw here, run it through. And I can peek to the back side. And it looks like there's just enough, Jeremy, to get on there. So I don't know if the instructions said to go outward, but here we go. So that's how it installs. Pretty easy. Let's say, you know, eight out of 10 for ease. There's a couple, there's a 10 out of 10 in the market, but we'll see what the feature set on this one is. Good deal. Okay. No subscription fees unless you want the cloud recording. Now you could take this if you want to finish this off and you could stick it there. That's what they recommend. It is adhesive though. So I'm going to put it back and I'm going to save that. Um, so that would have a cover on it normally. I'm going to bring this back and sideways so that I can do the next thing. Uh, hey Zach, I don't think you've seen this view yet. <laughs> we got a new switcher, as you could tell. Uh, it's given us a couple extra little views that are kind of nice and I can show some things. I'm bringing you guys back over here though. So we did finish it. Uh, adjust the angle of the lights it's saying no. And I do want to remove the hook. It didn't say to remove the hook. That's interesting. Maybe that was on a prior step. So I'm gonna remove the hook that they were using to hold us up. It says to switch on the circuit breaker and check to make sure that the camera has a green light on it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in. I am going to remove the cover just so we don't have any issues there or I forget. Okay. Now I did hear a click and I do see a green light here. So let's bring you guys back over. So there's a green light on the camera showing right away. Let's go back to the app here. So I'm going to bring the app up quickly so you can see it there. So we're going to take a look at the app and see if I've got everything. Uh, Jonathan Talks Hardware says, I took a nap and woke up an hour later with a notification. There we go. What did I miss? I love it. So here we go. Uh, brightness adjustment. So we can turn on the different settings here. Looks like it's still initializing. Motion light is enabled by default. When people or vehicles or objects are detected at night, it will automatically turn on. Set the custom period. Okay, we'll, we'll do it normally. Uh, human detection enabled, intrusion detection, pet detection. Normally you have to pay extra for this. So this is Edge AI then if they're doing it that in our family. And it says it's added successfully. Uh, firmware upgrades, general stability and performance and general budget fixes. So let's do a firmware upgrade. I hate to do this uh, live, but I want to make sure that we have the best experience and it's the most reliable. So I'll clean up while we're doing firmware and I'll take a look at the chat. Make sure I didn't miss anything from anybody. And man, that was pretty fast. So let's see. Double check in real quick. And I need to check on the Amazon Creator app. Um, Zachary, by the way, <laughs> Rising Sun, how much our replacement filters was asking? Uh, Rising Sun was on here earlier. Um, burns through rolls fast. Uh, so Rising, hey, Rising. Thank you for checking in on the Amazon side. Sorry I missed you on your uh, question there while we were doing that. And uh, Charles says, going to have to come visit to go fishing. You absolutely will. I'll take you out on the boat. It's an absolute blast. We love it. I uh, just want to make sure I've got the right product listed up here. Uh, it is on sale right now. So we're going to go take a look at that in just a second. But I'm going to take you guys back over here to the app because it says it's good to go. So there's the firmware update. And there's the front door. <laughs> uh, and let's go ahead and bring the live video. Got it. Got it. So it's giving us a little, oh, you know what? It is auto motion tracking. Now the camera is fairly tight on its uh, 
just looking at that. So this is meant to be installed high. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to demo inside the studio. We can turn the light on. Are you guys ready for that? That's always the one that's fun. So let's turn the light on. Yeah, it's bright. <laughs> oh, Aosu, this is their uh, floodlights. They are definitely bright. It does have a 3K camera on it, it's saying. So it's definitely a bright camera. You can see the unit there. I'm going to try to bring this a little closer. Um, and so you can see the actual unit spinning around. So when I use the pan tilt, you can see that it's spinning around all the way to behind. Now it's coming back this way and you can see the lens of the camera there moving around. And then there's the other side of my very dirty studio. Now, when I roll this over, I was kind of expecting it to remove the controls. So a little glitch in the app there. Let's try that again. Huh, interesting. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a glitch when I, there, it went away. I wanted to try to show you guys this in a full screen view, but when I do that, it wasn't going full. So I might have to look for, see if there's an app update for this. So that was front door. And then hopefully when I pan around here, you guys will get to see there's the back side and there's the studio. So my next step with this thing, you can see the other side of the studio. There's my very messy desk and some of the lights that we use, um, <laughs> all the cameras and other gear I have. You can look down. So there we're looking down. We're looking back up. So it does auto white balance. It's looking like it's auto exposure. And the exposure is pretty good on it. Um, I'm surprised actually not bad on the camera i will do some exterior testing some outdoor testing and we're going to find out how this thing does both at night it does have night vision so even if these aren't on you'll still have your night vision uh, also has the automatic motion detection to turn on your lights. so very exciting this is from a yosu this is their 3k security floodlight camera so very excited to test that out i will go hook that up outside later tonight and I will cut that footage in and maybe even let you guys know next week what that looked like. We're getting through the products pretty quickly here. I've got two products left. Both are kind of cool and both are very related to each other. Technically, you can't use one without the other, but um, I'm excited to use them. I'll show you that here in just a second. Let me get it reset. And yeah, I do have a bunch of different camera angles I can choose from here, as you see. <laughs> just lighting that camera up. This is our new switcher, so I'm kind of excited about that because it's going to allow me to do some things uh, that I can do only when I have more inputs. More input. Need input. Name the movie. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, the last product here is already installed and ready to go, and that is a Little Buddy heater. So I use this Little Buddy heater on the boat. I may upgrade to a diesel heater, but one of the neat things about the little buddy heater that we have here is it uses these replaceable propane tanks. So if any of you guys have this one, let me know. Um, so this is the portable buddy from Mr. Heater. There's different sizes and different models of it. This is the most popular by far. Um, you can use this in an enclosed area like a tent. You can use it in a house. The only thing they say is not to use uh, the full size cylinders with it if you're going to use it indoors because the full size cylinders can leak and have different connections. This one will not. Um, if you look at it, the way it has a ceramic element and the way that it burns, it doesn't leave carbon monoxide out. So that's good. It also has a safety in here. So if the uh, flame goes out for wind or whatever reason. It's not going to just be releasing gas into your room, which is really cool. So this is the Mr. Buddy heater, but you can see this one has something interesting on top here. Uh, to show you what that is, I'm going to have to start it up. So I've got the air conditioner <laughs> running in here. We're going to have a fight to the finish here for the air conditioner. Let's see if I can get this going for you. So to turn the Mr. Buddy on, you literally turn it to the pilot mode. You push down. And it's going to light. Let me go. I can go closer. Here we go. So as I push this down, it's going to light that little light. And you see how it goes out? If I let go, now it's a saying on. That's because that's heating that little thermal couple. And that little thermal couple is letting it know that it's safe. So once you get into that mode, you can rotate this all the way to on. And now you can see that it's starting to flame up. And so that's going to instantly put out heat, which is nice. But... I'll show you the trick on this one is these two little accessories on top. There are two very small DC motors. 
Let me pull this plastic out of here before it melts. And it has some sort of contraption in between that is pretty slick. So this little buddy, these are, or sorry, I keep calling it little buddy, the Mr. Buddy heater. This puts out a good amount of heat, but it all generally just goes straight up. So it's if you're in an enclosed area, it's going to go up. It's not really going to move that heat around. So this is an upgrade for this. And take a look at that. I didn't touch a thing. Those electric motors are now spinning on their own. And they're going to spin fast. So this thing is literally taking the extra energy from the heat that would be radiated up, turning it into an electrical <laughs> impulse and running those electric motors. And that is blowing the heat forward. Now, I don't have my uh, thermal camera hooked up to this, but I will definitely dub in and splice in in the final review video so you can see. But you can absolutely feel the heat radiating off the or ripping, and you can feel it sucking air from behind. So it's actually pushing that hot air around my studio and fighting my air conditioner to the finish. So very cool little uh, device. Now, a couple things, just warnings. If you've got little kids, probably not a great idea because it does have these two blades up here um, that could be dangerous. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, and I want, to, I want you to see something. There is literally no batteries in this unit nothing extra to carry um, and it is entirely powered by the heat inside the unit so the heat that's rising is creating an electrical signal and there just happens to be enough somehow to run these these uh, motors which the science is beyond me and i'm i'm a pretty science guy so i want to figure this out but it's the first time i've ever seen anything like it and it's drawing air even with this off it needs about 120 degrees this is the little buddy version that's, or sorry, the Mr. Buddy version that's mounted here. You can see them right there in the light, how they're still going. Um, but this will also work on a wood stove. So if you actually have a wood stove, one of the biggest problems with them is they make a lot of heat, but again, they radiate it straight up. This will give you that free airflow, just taking that extra heat and turning it into a uh, uh air flow which is awesome so i was excited about this one let's go take a look at amazon because i want to show you guys their amazon page on this one uh and you guys can tell me what you think of it there we go so this is it right here this is the wood stove fan sorry it's in the wrong corner this will work for a wood stove the mr buddy heater it does come with a couple accessories one it has this temperature setter uh, sender right here on the front so that's magnetic that'll go to any sort of wood stove that you have or anything which is kind of nice um let's go over here and take a look so if you do have a traditional wood stove this will absolutely work with this the price on this one it's eight dollars off or was eight dollars off yesterday oh it's back to 39.99 live but that's okay so that's how it works so if you've got a cabin if you've got a little uh you know portable stove you use for hunting I have no idea how this can do it. It's so awesome. Again, I'm very excited about it. It is completely quiet. I would say silent. It doesn't make any noise. Uh, it is easy to install. So uh, overheat protection. I love that. So it looks like it's got a little anode there uh, that somehow handles the overheat. <laughs> this is great. Uh, so again, 4.6 ratings. This is from X times 4.6 on 210 ratings come back over here take a look at it it's still going just off of the radiant heat there are no batteries with this unit and just the extra heat now it will come to a stop eventually which is pretty slick um, but talk about conversion of energy and efficiency it's just converting that into flow which is pretty slick i am going to show you real quick how i set this thing up so give me one second i'm going to go back to the show and i have a little unbox and uh, usage video i want to show you real quick so there it is and we'll get you going and you'll see what comes in the package this is that handsome devil from earlier <laughs> with his mr buddy portable buddy mr heater there we go so inside it very simple just three parts now the thing that makes it unique for the Mr. Bu uh, the portable buddy heater from Mr. Heater is this little tiny metal piece that's inside the box. So don't miss the pieces that are left on the box there. That in the white box is going to have the little adapter that you need. And it's blue there because it has a plastic cover on it. Make sure you take the plastic off of it or that would smell really bad. 
So I played around with this for a little bit, just learning how it connected up. I was taking a look at the instructions because this is the first time that I did this. Now it's still going over here. You can hopefully see it. Now that's where it connects on the heater itself. It's just a little spring-loaded connector. And what that's doing is it's actually, you can see it here, it's causing some pressure so that this doesn't fall out. Now, is it going to be perfectly still? Is it never going to vibrate or anything? No. I would take this off, honestly, for transport and, and protect it more than I would the heater. The, the heater's pretty durable. But yeah, again, very easy to use. And what's funny is I didn't know how long this would take. So I started this up uh, a little earlier today. And then I fired it up. And you're going to see the shock when I see this thing start moving because the scientist in me is going what the heck is going on here <laughs> uh, whatever uh, magic this is it's turning the temperature heat into electrical energy it's pretty slick and there it goes it starts automatically going you know a pretty pretty style in there and that is the demonstration like i said it, it does put quite a bit of air out uh, and it comes with an accessory it does have the temperature gauge so you can now see what your wood stove is at uh, this thing's still going it's starting to slow down so it's losing that electrical energy if i move it over here it'll be in front of the air conditioning <laughs> so you can see it spinning but it'll definitely come down so again very cool feature this is from x times that's the guys that sent it out they sent it out for a fair and honest review i'm going to use the heck out of this thing and i can't wait if you had a cabin with a cast iron or some other type of stove and you wanted to have an alternative heat source this is really really slick it definitely is neat to have that extra blower does fit really well on this like i said it will wobble a little bit there's just no adjustability in this so it'll go back and forth it looks like it's machined aluminum pretty well built and very light so again uh that is from x times believe it or not that is the end of the show everybody i do see a question down in here from jonathan talks hardware he is saying, uh, what other products did you cover before you came to install your cam? I will show you that right now. Give me one second. Let's go back over here. We'll do a quick rundown of the show for Jonathan here. Uh, actually, I got to go back. Hey, you want to see what I see? This is my uh, picture in a picture in a picture view. <laughs> so we talked about a few things. We started the show off with up here uh, a one to four HDMI splitter, not a switch, a splitter. So the neat thing about this is if you need the same view in many different rooms or on many different devices, you can do that. We took a look at a 200 watt solar panel ultralight. Let's go into that one, actually, because I didn't show their current one. This one is $50 off right now if you want to try this. So a uh, very cool product. This was sent from Rofi. The one thing I love about it is it actually has a lot of different options. And there's different sizes. Maybe you can't afford the 200. Maybe you only need... Uh, a 60 would be perfect if you paired it with one of the 300 watt uh, backup units. So there's that. Um, let's go into the Rofi store. I wanted to show you that they do have other products in here as well. So that's their um, solar kits. So there's more products coming here. So there's the panel. Let's see if they've got it here. I do see a uh, solar generator there. It looks pretty cool want to see all of their products one of these days so that'll be neat and let's go back here uh we also talked about a water filter as well as an instant water boiler we took a look at the box legend of the vacuum sealer variety there so you can get a vacuum sealer bags a continuous roll if you're doing commercial projects or anything else hey this thing is finally slowing down almost to a stop so uh, it took a while, as you can see, for just that heat to the residual heat to come off. We did take a look at a tire inflator. That was really cool. That one is available right now. And let's see if it's on sale. It is not on sale right now. So I don't know how many people bought that. I'm taking a look at our sales numbers here. Uh, I don't see any checkouts yet on the Amazon side. I do actually see uh, six products were tagged. So that's kind of cool. I think there are uh, six products people were taking a look at on amazon so very slick there and then we wrapped it up with these last three products and that was from aosu this is their floodlight camera and then the mr heater portable buddy heater four to nine thousand btu heater that's required to use the last accessory which was from x times this is their wood stove fan uh with dual motors this will work on wood stoves but it's also specifically designed to work with 
the Mr. Heater portable heater. So hopefully that answers your question there. We checked out a lot of products. I thank you guys for tuning in. I'm usually here every Tuesday, but the days change and the names uh, are changed to protect the innocent. So I will catch you guys all in the next one. Thank you for checking in and I will see you guys all later. Bye everybody.